tous. Merci beaucoup de m'avoir invité ici. C'est vraiment un plaisir d'être... Euh... Oh. Yeah. Can you understand me? No? Yeah. All right. Yeah, sorry. The funny stuff, I have a brain implant. And uh, this application it allows me to translate on the spot. Yeah, amazing stuff. But it's not written in Clojure, so I'll be talking about something else. Not very interesting. But speaking of brains, uh, I'd like to talk about collective intelligence. So my name is Adam Hellins, and um, I've been working now as a closureist for quite a while, a few years, professionally speaking. And um, I've noticed that there is a market, so to say, for uh, the collective intelligence of our community. And that's why we gather like this. This is because we want to harness this collective intelligence. And you know, after 15 years of existence, there is still a constant flow of ideas and good ideas. And it's uh, almost hard to keep track of all those libraries and applications and, and whatnot. Really good stuff. But uh, think of what happens, for instance, when you're searching for a library. So say that we are in the market for finding a good SQL library. What can we do? Well, we could go to GitHub. We could maybe consult some of those curated lists, like the Clojure Toolbox, if you know about that. We would find several options. We would have to try them, to read documentation, to compare them in some ways. And maybe eventually we'll find what we need. So you see, this is where we lose efficiency, so to say, in a sense that um, any new individual that comes along and is in the market for a SQL library will have to undergo such a similar journey. So we have a very good, strong ecosystem, but it's not really searchable, discoverable. So I thought it would be pretty useful having some sort of tool where you know where to go, essentially, and you can simply search for what you need. So in our case, that will be this SQL library. And uh, you'll find a whole series of different results that you know relates to Clojure somehow. Most likely, you could just pick the first one, which should be good enough. And lucky us, yeah, this seems to be some kind of page about SQL indeed. And uh, we can see here a list of what appears to be different pieces of works. Let's uh, see what it's all about. So the first one here is, oh, boom, right away. We can tell that this is a, a library indeed. It is about SQL indeed. It runs on the GVM. Um, I have a link. All good. All right. <laughs> that was easy. Well, yes, but I see this comment here that uh, this has been somehow uh, superseded by next.jdbc, which I'm not sure what it is, but if I click on it, I can tell right away, okay, it's not a library, but it seems to be what uh, people use these days. So most likely this is what we should be uh, using, or at least try first. So that's pretty convenient. But what, what are those linked references right there? Now, the first bit we have seen before, that's uh, what we was looking at right, right before, and that's how we, we got here, actually, in the first place. Now, the second bit that we haven't seen before, what is this? Yet another library with a similar uh, name, how confusing, but we can tell right away that this one is not really actively maintained, doesn't seem so, and once again, we are led back to next.jdbc. All right, so in a matter of seconds, really, we have found what we were looking uh, for, and all of this is, is there, and it seems that um, it's quite navigable because those links um, are actually bidirectional. So whenever A references B, when we look at B, we can see that A talks about it. Uh, so we can crawl this space, you know, start more or less um, by knowing you know, roughly what we want and then just uh, go with the flow and most likely we'll find what we need. Or uh, we'll have confidence that it's not out there and maybe we should do uh, our own stuff. And naturally, if you start that kind of thing, you would want to put useful metadata. Uh, we usually want to know where does something run? Is it GVM only? Is it about Clojure script? Uh, is it Babashka compatible, for instance? Uh, we would need some kind of tags, you know, thematically, knowing what's going on. and especially in Clojure, it would be relevant to know what is this? Is it a library? Is it an application or anything in between like we, we see quite often? So yeah, we would naturally want to use that kind of metadata. And the neat thing is that then you don't have to craft any kind of list manually because all of this is more or less automated. So if we come back to this SQL tag, uh, this table here is actually um, a result of the, this tiny query here um, 
above. Now you could actually query uh, all that metadata, those pages, um, using data log if you, if you want. But in our case, it's the simple format that you, you can see right there is uh, fair enough. We just look at page properties, so that, that metadata, we look for, for tags, and we look for the SQL tag. So it's convenient that we don't have to really craft that kind of list, but it goes a bit further. Let me show you this example. That's a bit more exciting. Um, here we, we look for all the pages that relate to data log and platform-wise run at least on the browser. And sure enough, we have here a list of works. I can recognize the authors <laughs> uh, like DataScript that are very much about data log and can run uh, indeed in the browser. So suddenly it, it becomes highly searchable. If you link different pieces of works like this and provide enrich them with that kind of metadata, then you are effectively building a knowledge graph of the Clojure ecosystem. And um, yeah, I thought it would be pretty useful. And lucky you, it's not just a, a wild dream, it's actually what you're staring at. So welcome to uh, Clojurepedia. If you go to clojurepedia.org, you'll find well this, which is a read-only version of this knowledge graph. And it's powered here by Loxic, which is a knowledge management system. I'm sure that some of you have heard of it because it's written in ClojureScript, actually. So I really do fancy the idea of using a Clojure tool for describing the Clojure ecosystem. It feels very meta. Uh, but under the hood, all, all of this, all those pages are actually markdown. So no obscure you know, format or binary stuff. It's very amenable to a typical Git collaboration flow. Uh, so that's already a good start. And uh, even more so that uh, this is future proof. So Loxic is open source, they, they, they got funding, it's pretty all right. But if you are a bit anxious about the future, then you have to know that you can export the whole graph into a few formats, one being Eden, right? So even if we have to migrate in the future at some point, it should be pretty all right. And so, now really it's up to you because this graph is really tiny. The hard part was, I mean, it looks pretty big uh, like this, but it's actually pretty tiny as such. Um, the, the hard part was figuring out the structure because there are quite a few ways you could go for uh, when it comes to organizing a project like this. So all this metadata, how do you make it searchable and you know, um, easy enough to access. Uh, but now the content of course has to, to come. It's the kind of project where the more you put and the more it really becomes useful. You have this exponential effect, um, essentially. And contributing is fairly straightforward. If you've never used that kind of system before, then sure, there is a bit of a learning curve. But, um, you know, it, it has the potential to change your life <laughs> in the sense that if you start using that kind of tooling for, for your own stuff, it becomes uh, really useful. And if you want to contribute, well, um, there are instructions trying to make that learning curve a bit smaller, so to say. Um, it's not maybe obvious the very first time, but once you, you do it, then you, you get it. And then it's just about forking the repo, loading the graph in the desktop application. You do edits, you add pages, you, you do what you need to do, commit, pull request, and, and that's it. Then. The website is built automatically, it's deployed automatically, you don't have to worry a thing. And it's not just about uh, tools and libraries, hard called code. Uh, let me show you this example, which is a bit more complex. Uh, maybe you have noticed that those page titles have here those, uh, you know, they look a bit like files in directories. And they kind of are we will talk here about the hierarchies. So all those uh, directories, so to say, they are pages. You could use them to add contextual information. And very often the, the root here will be the organization or the individual that authored anything that's in, in that hierarchy. So um, if you put some works of yours, do tell us a bit about you, who, who you are as an individual, as a group. Uh, the ecosystem is not just the tools, the libraries and the applications, it's also the people behind those. That's where the community uh, part comes along. So hopefully in this graph we'll see tools but also names. And uh, I'd like to, to finish there by talking about Clojurists together. So, so far 
Um, I've sponsored this through my, my own company, but also uh, I got a, a little grant from Clodris together. And I'm quite grateful because, you know, besides the money itself, which is always welcome, uh, it was a way of telling me that uh, it's not just ideas that I have. Uh, this could be useful. At least some people would probably get it. So thanks. And uh, thanks to you for your attention. And thanks for any future contributions. I see uh, some questions, yeah? Uh, hello. Uh, where does the data come from? Like, where do you store the data? So, um, the pages themselves, they are in Markdown. We don't really care about it as a user because you always use the, the interface, the desktop application uh, to do edits. But then, um, unless it has changed, because it's still in beta, I'm in Logsic, so um, I don't follow exactly what's going on. But uh, from what I know, all of this is parsed uh, into actually, uh, eventually, data log. So when you load on the website, effectively, you, everything is loaded into, into data script, uh, I think. And, um, and yeah, but it, it does scale quite well. So unless we have thousands and thousands of pages, usually um, it's pretty all right. Mm. Uh, yes, uh, I mean, fight for it. <laughs> Um, I wanted to ask you if you thought about uh, any rating system, because I believe that uh, you picked the first, right? Um, you were lucky, I think, picking mm -hmm. the first. If you um, come at some point that you're able to scrape the entire GitHub for the closure projects, for example, and bring them all in, uh, you might see like a long list of those, and uh, uh, you could pick the first, but you might be unlucky, and the project maybe is maintained. Um, it, there should be a, probably a way to bump up or down projects based other or user contributions, thumbs up, thumbs down, or a uh, number of stars or other parameter, other metrics that you find online. Have you thought about that? Not too much, to be honest, uh, but, but that's interesting. The one concern I would have is how to do it without it becoming too complex. So trying to stay within the realm of uh, logic and not having like to run a server or whatnot. Um, but there, are, there are ways, I think. I'm not sure quite uh, what at the moment, uh, but I sense there are some possibilities, yeah. Uh, and by the way, all of this is uh, very open. I, I mean, when it comes to Im improvement in the structure, um, and we, we could add more th stuff like events, maybe. Um, so, so, yeah. Hi. Um, I think it's, it's a great idea, and I, um, I'll definitely explore the content more. When you clicked on the um, bit of the code that allowed to export the content, it, one of the options was ROM JSON. And um, I'm, I'm just wondering, the look of this is very similar and the feel to, to ROM research. Have you considered just having the same content but within ROM? <coughs> Yeah, uh, by the way, I have no link to Logsic, just that uh, I happen to like it and it happens to do the job here. Um, the ROM is a, another similar, I think it predates, right, uh, Logsic, but it, it is indeed very similar. Um, but it's closed source, right? I'm not so sure that um, it would be so easy. I mean, I'm not sure it would be so future proof. And um, what I like here also is the fact that uh, it's just Git under the hood, right, when it comes to collaboration. Um, I haven't used ROM too much. Um, maybe we, we can have a discussion later on uh, about how it would look like when you have this kind of massive collaboration, right? As opposed to each one having an account, for instance, and, uh, and so on. One issue, at least that I face with uh, Closure Docs, is that it's not really up to date. Hmm. Closure 11 is out. We can't find iteration, UUID, those kind of functions, because it all depends on somebody filling those pull requests. The community as a whole, uh, I'm pretty sure we like this idea, but how do we make it not depend on somebody filling in those pull requests all the time, and that person can basically do whatever he or she wants? Yeah, so let me take a counter example here. Um, but it's a valid, valid point here. So if we go back just to next on JDBC, so first of all, this is not the place to do any kind of tutorials, for instance, because those would go really um, off sync quite quickly. So 
we, we try to present information in a timeless fashion. Now, I take here back this example because this is not quite timeless, right? Here, I, I point to the idea that this is more modern, this is, uh, you know, what people are using these days. So that kind of information here might go out of sync when the next library uh, come along and people switch. So we should try to limit that kind of information. Uh, but usually, if you just care about providing metadata, um, maybe like links to some talks about the library you're presenting or stuff like that, this is more or less pretty timeless. So at least what you, you've posted doesn't go uh, off sync with the rest of the world. Um, but when it comes to adding new stuff and being up to date with everything that happens, like on the announcement channel, for instance, on Clojurian Slacks, then uh, yeah, there's no magic. Uh, <laughs> I could think of uh, right there. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.